I 100% agree with what you're saying about the 1,000 calorie surplus of fat versus the 1,000 calorie surplus of carbohydrates. Uh, the one thing that I, I will say that is not inaccurate but just kind of impractical is that someone's not going to eat 1,000 calories of fat in one sitting. Uh, I know that's just used for an example and you're just trying to get science across, but I wanted to start with that. You're not going to eat, typically you're not going to eat, a th you're not going to eat a stick of butter. Just not palatable enough, you're going to get too full, your body just won't, you won't eat that. Whereas 1,000 calories of carbs, I'm sure there are people who are watching this video, who watch your video, that like to work out, or just anyone in general, that are addicted to carbohydrates and they have no self-control. Or they, or when they do have like a piece of bread or a donut, they can't stop. I'm one of those people that can eat a box of donuts. Um, people think that's ridiculous, but I just have that switch. My part of my genes are just part of how I am. I can just eat ridiculous amounts of food if I'm not, if I don't check myself with certain foods, because certain foods are very palatable. They taste really good, and I overeat them. So, um, I guess donuts is kind of a bad example because it's mostly fat anyway, but. And where I'm going at with this is that although you're going to convert more, even though you have a thousand calorie surplus of fat, if you eat more fat in your diet, you're less likely to eat a caloric surplus. Because a lot of the time, practical application, this is just reference to everyday people that, um, well, this kind of screws up my whole response, but I still want to add this to it. Because someone who's watching this video might not be someone who trains six days a week. Uh, like you, I know train six days a week. I train six days a week, sometimes seven or depends on how your training cycle is, sometimes more, you know, 10 training sessions a week, that a lot of people who, who only have the time or the dedication to work out three or four days a week will misconstrue the idea that when you eat more fat, or if you try to substitute more of your, more of your, your fat, extra cheat calories or extra fat calories for carb calories, excuse me, the one thing that will happen is that you will have a higher likelihood of eating for the simple fact that carbohydrates tend to be much more palatable and very easily overeaten. Certain combinations of fats and sugars, donuts being the example, cinnamon toast crunch with milk, pizza, lasagna, all this stuff, you just tear it up because of the palatability of it. So and from practical applications, that's for people who are not training as dedicated as um, some people or as kind of what your, your, um, your, your viewer base, because your viewer base is people who work out very often or work out significantly more than the average individual, is that for people who are not training that regularly, can't get away with eating a lot of carbs for the simple fact that they will have a higher likelihood of overeating and messing up with their energy levels. If you're training hard, that kind of puts you in a different category, and I get where the extra carbohydrates make sense, and you don't want to eat or not overeat fat, but don't make that thousand calories be all fat. Uh, or actually what you're really saying I think is that it makes no difference if it's fat or if it's um, carbohydrates. That, that I actually haven't heard you say or contest Ter Gary Tobbs. And I like Gary Tobbs' opinion because, and I hope you don't hate me for this, uh, but Gary Tobbs is targeting sedentary individuals who won't get their ass off the couch. Now, those people, they, they drive you crazy sometimes, they're just too lazy, they only work out once a week, or they work out very sporadically, but you know what, I'm a trainer, I'm a coach, that's the people I deal with. So it's kind of like I have to give them a philosophy to help them manage their weight if they can't get to the gym, or they can't, uh, or they have wild weight fluctuations. So, so Gary Tobb's view I see as kind of a way to mitigate issues with people who just don't exercise, or who too damn lazy to exercise, or be on a, on a strict training regimen, or who don't like working out, who rather, not do that stuff, I guess. And I guess that's it. Anyways, I appreciate everything that you do, uh, Jason. I really love your videos. I love your scientific perspective. You're, you really reel me back in when I get stuck with the calories don't matter, paleo community sort of stuff. I, I'm a big paleo advocate, but I, I see it in a different context. The main thing is that food is, is a tool, and you just got to know how to use that tool. Or it's a drug. It's, food is a drug, and you got to know how to use that drug. For your applications, if you're sitting your butt all day, you're probably going to eat less foods that will make you overeat. For most people, it tends to be carbs, but that, that but that will vary. If you can have a high carb diet and maintain your weight, um, but yeah.